So the first thing I'm going to do with my two watt, my uh, two strands of paracord, like I say, about 11 feet each. Um, I'm going to find the middle of these. Uh, make sure there's no knots in it. Oops. And uh, the fast way to find the middles is just to get the two ends and go to where they meet, right? So, rather than measuring it out and trying to get a tape measure and put those things, I just take the four ends and I think just to keep this. Okay, so there I've got my four ends singed up. Line them up, and then I'm just going to go to where the ends meet. And there are my centers. So, now I've got my centers. I'm just going to cross them so that I have my red and blue. So, red and blue, blue, red and blue, blue. And now I'm going to take the one on the bottom to the top and the one on the top to the bottom and it doesn't really matter which side you go to as long as you remain consistent with that so and then I'm going to do the same thing uh, with the left and the right so I'm going to go right to left and left to right and this is kind of the trickiest part of this of this part of the process is getting this started. Once you get it done a couple of times, then it's going to then then you'll have a little bit of a tab and you can kind of hold on to it and it's easier, but so I'm just going to, you know, repeat that process bottom to the top, top to the bottom, left to, or right to the left and then left to the right. You kind of got to fight your your strings here for your uh, cords here for a little bit until you get them until you get into the braid a little bit because then it and they start shortening up. But left over here to the right, right over here to the left, and you can kind of start to see now that braid coming together, and then I'm gonna. Do it one more time. Bottom to the left, or bottom to the top, top to the bottom. Right to the left and left to the right. And once you get it to about right here, now we can flip this over. that out there all right I'm gonna hurry and get this done you want to go till this is right about three feet um, is what's comfortable for me for wrapping around my neck and where I want it uh, that way I can when it's if I get it three feet long then I can put it around my coat and things uh, when I've got a hood on in the winter time and and still have my lanyard on the outside so I can get to my whistle or or to my remote so I'm going to go ahead and do this really finish this really quick and get it to where we need to so then I can show you how to how to make the loop and connect it. So I got all the way through that last video and realized that um, I did not, I didn't have, well, I didn't have something going. I can't remember if it was the audio or the, the camera, but I didn't have it going for the last part of it to tie it off. So 
I'm going to make a couple more and I'm going to show you some different options uh, that you can do to, to finish it off to give it a little different look. Um, and there's, there's, you can do kind of a, a blocky square or there's a cobra weave that kind of makes it more flat. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and prep these and then really quickly, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna I'll braid these up, get them to a point to where I can show you kind of how to end them, how to terminate them, and then you'll, uh, you'll be set. You'll be ready to make your own lanyard. So that's clearly not long enough to be a lanyard, but if you'll do what we did at the beginning of this video with the other colors, uh, then you'll get the lanyard long enough. I just wanted to hurry and get this done so that I can uh, jump to the part where we're going to close this off and then terminate it and then show you how to attach the, um, the whistle and the uh, remote control. So. Uh, when you get to this stage right here, what you're going to do is uh, either with your needle nose pliers, which is what I used last time, or if you don't have those, um, a fork works great too. And you just want to get some space between those top two, the, the, the first, uh, first one of the striped, the bottom, the bottom one of the striped, the blue and orange striped, and then the bottom one of the solid orange. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed these, uh, the next one in the process. So you'll see that I've got my striped blues are on top. So I'm going to take my orange and my orange, and I'm going to go through uh, each of those. I'm going to go through, one of them is going to go through the, uh, the solid orange, and one of them is going to go through the striped orange. It's going to look like this. And you kind of try and keep a hold of your two uh, other tails so they don't go all crazy on you. Force that through there. Yeah, there it goes. There we go. So that's going to go through there like that. And then I'm going to take this striped blue and take it through the striped blue. I think I told you that I'm going to do the orange one, but I'm actually going to take this striped blue one uh, through this one. So that, and you'll just see how they just kind of fit together. What I'm doing is the two on this side. So you notice that. I mean, if I've so I've got my four, I've got a top, a right, a bottom, and a left. And so what I'm doing is, and, and I could have done any two that are on the same side. So I could have gone top and right, or right and bottom, or bottom and left. But I, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go uh, right and bottom because that's kind of the way they're snugging up. It's just kind of the way they're fitting together. Pull that one through there, and then I'm just going to kind of snug up on all of my so now I've got kind of a choice as to how I want to do this. Now, let me show you first how I did the block. Uh, one and this this is going back to the elementary school days of what was the plastic the thin plastic stuff that you used to use so what we're going to do here is now I notice I've still got the same direction I've still got a top a right bottom left and the colors are still in the same place um, and so but this time instead of just crossing them over both at the same time I'm actually going to weave them and this is going to be how we got the block pattern on that other uh, on my on the lanyard that I actually finished, which I'm not sure if I've showed you that or not yet. I'll uh, I'll show you that at the end of the video. So I'm actually going to weave it. So it's going to go 
So the one on the right is going to go over and under, and then the one on the left is going to do the same thing, over and under. And some of you will remember what the plastic stuff that, man, we used to do it in elementary school all the time. And we'd make all those dongle keychains. So then you can keep going. Um, I like to go about four inches uh, on mine, four or five inches on mine, and then uh, once you're at this point, once you're ready to stop and you've uh, you've got it snugged up, you've got your uh, extension, what I, you know, a little extension piece or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the way you're going to finish this off is you're going to cut each one of you're going to cut one of each color, and you're going to burn that end and you're going to melt it down. And then you're going to uh, you're going to leave the other two and use those for holding your whistle and your remote. Uh, but before I do that, I'm actually going to undo this one. So that's the idea of the square one, and you'll see that on my finished lanyard in a second. But I want to show you one more weave that you can put at the end of this. Let me undo this really quick. That's why I didn't go all the way. Is I knew I was going to undo it. Okay, so now I'm back to where I was um, before I started the square. And now we're going to do a different weave. I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's called the Cobra weave. Um, but basically what I'm going to do on this one is, you'll notice that I've, I'll get it back to where I've got, you know, my top, right, bottom, left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on the side. I'm going to bring um, this orange. I'm going to lay it on top here, tighten that back up. So now I've got it laying flat. I'm going to bring those two, my two solid oranges right to the center like that. Now I've got a right and a left striped. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the, I'm going to create a loop on the top. With, the, with my stripe on the left and with my one on the right, I'm going to come up and through that loop. But before I tighten it down, I'm going to go down. So with the, with the tail of uh, this one from the left, I'm going to go down the loop on this side. Then I'll just snug those up. Okay, and now I'm going to do just the exact opposite. I'm going to go from the bottom, and this time I'm going to keep. I'm going to go on the top. I'm across. I'm going to stay on top of the oranges, is what I mean, and go down through the loop. And I'm going to pull this back one through the top of the loop. And what that's going to do, alternating like that, is going to help me help keep this braid flat which is what I want. So now we'll just repeat. Keep the one, now the one on the right, or the one on the left stays up on top again. Come up behind and through. Down with this one. And snug it up. Now I'll go to the back. And pull that through. And so what I use the way I usually think about this is the one that goes on top is always going to go on top no matter which side it's on. So 
this one's going down through that loop see that right there so it's going through that so I'm gonna leave it on top because it's it's the one that goes on top because it's the one that's been going on top now on that same side you'll see how this time the loop is coming up instead of going down my tail is coming up so that tells me that it goes behind it's gonna go behind my oranges this one's gonna come on top Just pull that through Now it's going down, so it comes on top. So, and once you try this with your own, once you, once you get this going, you'll you'll see the pattern. You'll you'll see how the the you'll see the pattern of of when it comes up, it goes behind. And if it's going down, it comes on top or in front. What I'm going to do now, uh, if this was my square one, then I would I I would cut the two that are on the back of the square. I would cut those and burn them the way. I'm, but on the if you do this cobra weave, I think that's what this is called. If you do this flat weave, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to cut these two on the sides, and then these are going to be what holds our. Uh, our whistle and our remote scissors of such when you're using these kind of scissors make sure you don't uh, accidentally cut more strings than you want so cut that fairly close and then what we're going to do is burn it and get it fairly I want a little bead of liquid on it and then I'm going to take the spoon and just roll it over. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now I've got my two strings. Now I'm just gonna, I've just got one of these little clips. Um, you can use any attachment you want. You saw what I was using for my other lanyard um, to finish that up. Kind of a heavy duty clasp for the remote control and then a, a, a clip like this for the whistles. And all I'm gonna do is to get that started, through here, and then you can kind of figure out, measure out about how long you want this. And go through. Um, when you do this, you're going to pull it tight and you're going to get a little extra length. So keep that in mind. Um, give yourself a couple of inches. And come down. I, I would come down maybe an inch and a half, oh, two and a half inches or so. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to start wrapping this paracord back on itself I'm going to pull it through Now with that set like that, so you can see I, I added, I gained another maybe two inches on the length of that uh, beyond what I had planned on. And I'm just going to work that until it's about as tight as I can get it. now and then I'm just going to cut and burn that as well. And 
And this one, oh, let it get a little nice bubble on it. And now that's not going to go anywhere and I can throw my uh, whistle on that. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this little tutorial on how to make your own dog whistle lanyard. Uh, if it's been helpful or if you learned something, go ahead and give me a like. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you uh, subscribed as well. Hit the little bell next to that uh, red button there so you get notified every single time we send out one of these videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.